What's up guys and welcome back to another video with me, Vota, your host. Welcome back to View for Vota, of course, and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing. I've just bought myself the H115i Corsair all-in-one liquid cooler. So yeah, let's get right into it. Right, so starting with the outside of the box, let's just uh, delve into some of the details on the packaging. So they say here, advanced SP140 LPWM fan design for better static pressure and customizable noise levels. So part of the reason why I got this is I wanted to, I've just got myself the 4790K Devils Canyon i7 and I want to overclock it. So um, I want some nice big fans. Um, when it comes to cooling, it's not always about how many fans, It's a lot more goes into airflow and static pressure so sp140 means static pressure 140 millimeter fan uh, this obviously has two of them um, the improved cold plate and pump for better efficiency so they've obviously got uh, they've got pre-applied uh, thermal paste on there and it is a does it say here what kind of i'm assuming it's copper um corsair link so download the free corsair link software for customizable led and fan speed control so that's obviously a big thing for me um if you saw my video about the asus motherboard that i bought the formula 7 um, on there i spoke about um, the fan headers on the motherboard itself because what i've got is a an nzxt h440 case and there is a fan hub at the back but the problem with that is that all the fans run at 100 percent all the time you can't use speed fan, you can't use anything. There's probably a hack of how to change the voltages to slow things down, but I don't want to do that. So with that motherboard and with this cooler, that's going to help me a lot because I'm going to be able to then control. So there's there's LED control, there's fan speed control, all as part of the unit. Um, <clears throat> moving on, we've got the large, large 280 millimeter radiator with more surface area for superior cooling performance. So obviously we'll have a look when we open it up, we'll check how uh, the, the fin density on the radiator. Um, and then just in terms of dimensions, um, the radiator is 140 by 312. And then when you have the fans and the radiator connected, you're getting what, 40, 51 millimeters in total. So if you buy something like this, just keep in mind, look at the size of your case, how much clearance you have above your motherboard especially for your ram if you've got high profile ram just make sure that you are you know clearing that with your radiator and fans so they've got some more dimensions here okay so fan speed 2000 10 percent rpm so that's pretty good uh, so then they talk about airflow and pressure um, like i said that's that's more important than the, the number of fans you have it's it's more about the the pressure that's coming through there and pushing the air or pulling the air through the radiator so you, you know expel all the heat that you want to get rid of <clears throat> and then uh, so the fan pressure is 3.43 millimeters and then the fan noise level is 45 decibels which is not too bad but we'll we'll see if we can't do a little bit of a noise test to see how everything works out so without further ado let's open this bad boy up if you hear me sniffing i apologize i have been sick you'll probably hear it in my voice as well what i need these videos right here there we go right so first thing you see is obviously all the manuals warranty warranty guide and then sort of yeah so here's all your details about what's in it how to install it yada 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 what a, what a fish paste we have foam right so starting off with the fans so i have currently got sp120 fans in my case it's not attached to any radiators except for the the h75 that i've got on my current cpu um, and they have red rings um, so i'm gonna have to then eventually replace these with those i don't have them yet but i will do that just to keep with the color scheme i do have a red and black color scheme on my case uh, but yeah there's your 140 sp fans uh, you do get different variations you get airflow and you get sp um, airflow i think is a little bit quieter but it's also you know and then sp is the static pressure so it's, it's more about static pressure getting the egg moving through it than uh, silence essentially so you get two of those and then you get the main unit oh no let's look at this first 
So, inside here, you get all your bits and bobs. Let's maybe move this out the way, let's do that. Cool. <clears throat> so, in here, you get, so I'm assuming it is pre-installed. Okay, so it's pre-installed with the AMD uh, brackets, but uh, it's pre-installed with the Intel brackets, sorry, and then you get the AMD brackets separately if you have an AMD CPU. <clears throat> So that's for the backup layer, that's for the front. Got all your screws, you got all your thumb screws and your nuts and bolts and all the good stuff. That's all good and well. And then this is your connector. So this will go into the pump head, um, which we'll, we'll pull out now. And so it's got a little USB and it's got a, a what's that? It's a, it's a sort of eight pin. Um, connector that you plug into the motherboard and then you can so this will allow you to control the fan speeds allow you to control the led lights um yeah so that's that what else have we got in here so then i think it's straight on to the big gahuna so then we can move that out the way so there we go so there is the unit itself it's got a kind of like a braided tube which is quite nice aesthetically pleasing um like I, I kind of prefer this. I've looked at the Cooler Masters as well, but they've got that sort of weird, like knobbly braided piping, which I, I don't really dig. Um, there is the radiator with your 140 fans. You can see that you've got the Corsair logo, all very nice. And then here are all your cables. So this allows you, like I said before, these are like fan headers. Uh, there's your power. Um, this will all allow you to control the fan speed for the fans on the radiator itself. And then, like I said, on the side, we have the little micro USB, which is where this little guy will plug into. And then you can control the RGB lighting because this bad boy over here, the head, does have RGB lighting in it, which you can adjust with the Corsair software. <clears throat> they have a pre-applied thermal paste, which I will get you a close-up of, but that's pretty cool. Um, I do have my own, so I will most likely be using that. I have, so I've got this Extreme Fusion Thermal Compound X1, so it's Cooler Master Compound, so I will probably be using this and removing the pre-applied thermal compound. So just looking at the uh, fin density, I don't know if you can see through there, but it's fairly clear. I mean. I blow my fingers I can feel it um, obviously you get different densities with your fins on your radiators like you don't want <clears throat> you don't want something that's like too dense because otherwise you know you can't get as much airflow or you'll need a much stronger fan much higher rpm although denser is better <clears throat> you'll need a lot stronger fans to to get the airflow moving through it um, but this is pretty good this is nice and nice and thin uh, yeah very happy with this and uh, yeah, so the next thing to do is just to install it, but I will show you that in another video because I'm going to do a full upgrade. I'll be putting the motherboard in, I'll be putting the CPU in, and I will be putting this in, and you can see the whole unit all together. So anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today, I think. That's my first ever unboxing of a product. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you were ever looking to buy any sort of coolers, I would highly recommend these my other one is a Corsair that is a single 120 mil radiator it's it's about the same thickness as this but obviously it's not the dual it's just the one um, which has been working fine because I've got a, an, a a locked CPU currently but now that I've got the i7 4790k it is unlocked so I'll be overclocking it so I was looking to upgrade my cooling solution so <clears throat> there's a bit of a debate between you know like well, I've, for me at least, there's an internal debate. I wanted to go and get a custom liquid loop, something like Thermaltake or uh, EK Waterblocks. The thing is, that's all good and well, and it'll do the same job as what this would do, or at least this will do a similar job as to what the custom loop would be doing, but the custom loop is like 4,000 Rand more than this. So you're paying a lot of money for aesthetics and for sort of customizability, but until that day, until I, uh, save up the funds or whatever to get my custom loop this is going to have to do the trick anyways guys thank you so much for joining me if you liked the video smash the like button if you didn't like the video smash the thumbs down video thumbs down video thumbs down button um and uh, yeah let me know what do you think of this have you got this yourself um have you had any good experiences bad experiences let's talk about it in the comments below thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video